Hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you an advice as a telemarketer to improve your overall performance in a day. So here we go. The first thing you need to be aware of is the time that you are spending without making any calls. I know this is an issue and this is a real issue because the more time that you spend in between calls, essentially your store is closed, so you're not calling anyone. And this happens because due to a certain variety of factors, namely, it's, it's mostly psychological. So in order for you to kind of address this, and like, like the billionaire Carl Slim said, when you start uh, seeing the problem, you start doing something about it because you start seeing it. And essentially, that comes down to the amount of time that you are spending in between calls. And this is due to psychological pressure. So the way for you to ascertain if you do have a situation regarding this is that you start feeling like this incredible need to get up and start doing something else like uh, get a cup of coffee or go outside for a walk or like go watch the sun and then do the second call. So be behind this, behind this problem is essentially you placing too much pressure uh, like into making the call and being successful. We already addressed this in previous episodes and this is essentially coming down to either you if you are not certain of what you are delivering or the product or yourself in regards to that situation or if it's something like regarding a certain level of fear of rejection a fear of unknown coming from the other end what i can tell you is that our brains work from essentially like databases databases of information when you enter a situation that is a bit of a known, you don't, you don't have enough data points in order to address that situation, the confidence level go do goes down because you don't know what to do about it. And this is, even if it's like subconscious, even if you're like a very confident person, but you're entering something that is pretty unknown, right? So what I've learned, and I'll be brutally honest with you because this has helped me like tremendously. What I've learned is that it is not real. It, it really isn't because you are, Essentially, you, you are placing way too much pressure on what is it that the other person is telling you when it's an honor for that person to be talking with you in the first place. And when you po put things in that perspective, you start coming down a bit. So what I what I've uh, done that has worked out for me very well is when I wake up every morning, I already talked about my daily habits like I have and you should do them as well as you'll find that this is very powerful. You have your uh, moment of you, it's like completely selfish. It's your own you time. So only you, nobody else bothers you, not even the cat. It's like completely you, right? Because this is really important when you wake up. It's like to get kind of energized and centered into your own self so that you can like, okay, I'm like reboot the computer, right? So it's like completely fresh, right? Then it's about your, the second step is your motivations for the day. And what I do is twofold like we already talked about. The first one, the thing is open up my motivation folder on my PC and like see the pictures and the things that I've done, like the, the diplomas with my name, like the, the number in my bank account, like the number that I want. Even if it's like done on like a Photoshop or something, doesn't matter. It's a, you need to see it, right? Because it it's, does something to your mind. And when you start seeing these things like on a program day, like every single day, like walk work, like at the same time and every, every on, like after you reboot, it's like you load the program. See what I mean? So it's like, okay, I see what I need, what I want to, to be in, let's say in a couple of years or even like it's next year or next couple of months, right? So it's like, you see it, right? It's a diploma, it's the money, it's a trophy wife, it's a trophy car, the trophy house and so on, right? And then the second thing that I do is I actually write it down. I don't know why that works. I just know it does. It works differently from just seeing the, the pictures. So you see the pictures, then you start writing things down, like your name, this amount of money in your checkings account and so on. Like every single day you write the same, same, same uh, thing over and over again. After you do that, you practice your script. And what, what you have to engrave in the back of your mind is, and you don't have to have, you can't have, not you don't, you can't have a single doubt in your mind about the product that you are delivering. You must be certain that this is um, something that will benefit the other person. It's something that you know that if they would be selling that to you, it will benefit you, right? So there would be no doubts, none whatsoever, be, uh, like in regards to who you are, 
what you want to accomplish from that day and regarding the product that you are delivering to that person. Because what happens is when the, when that, the other person, the other person starts like giving you some objections, you, you push them out with confidence because you started your day self-centering energy on you, understanding f from the motivation folder where you want to, where you want to go in life, where you want to be in the next year. You write things down in regards to you as a PhD, you the trophy wife, you the ex house, you the ex car, and so on. And you practice the, the script, and you are certain about exactly who you are, what you are delivering to the world, and the product that is a um, kind of a, a vehicle in, for the exchange of money that is going to happen today when you are talking with that person. So now the only kind of variable that is like out of, out of sync is your perception of people that you are talking to every day, like potential customers, and the ones that actually convert. Because remember, you will become rich when people that do sign the contracts and do pay the insurance company, then you get your commission. So if you start dealing, if you only deal with a bunch of dysfunctional and broke motherfuckers, you won't get anywhere. But if you start dealing with people with the financial wherewithal, right, and you are able to convey your message appropriately regards to their specific situation, you show yourself as a confident person, you know who you are, you, you stand behind your product, you stand behind your company, and you challenge them on their own beliefs when they start throwing you objections. Because they say something, it is in regards to like throwing you a little bit off track regarding the confidence that you have on your product, you immediately say, what is it? You don't like me, you don't like the product, you don't like the insurance company, what is it? The company is almost 200 years old. I'm giving you a, a million life insurance policy and you're paying 1,000 bucks a year. How is it that is a bad business? See what I mean? It's completely different than the other person that is like trying to almost be apologetical and like be a subservient way like of showing them like himself like an employee or something, like begging for business. Why? You are giving them a product that it will benefit them. If I give you today 1 million bucks in exchange for 600 bucks, wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do it? See what I mean? You are talking from a completely different uh, perspective because you are confident in what you're telling them. And you are confident because you are practicing every day, you're practicing your pitch, you're improving your skills regarding the, the overall sector because you understand the sector better. You are improving your skill set regarding the product knowledge, so you're trying to understand better the, pro uh, the product and different situation that you could apply the, um, the product, right? So when you are talking in this way to people, they see you differently. And this is the only problem essentially that I see um, as, at this point where I am right now. I'll be brutally honest with you. My pathway until here, it was like I had a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things that I, I didn't understand. Some, I took some like wrong turns, but now I'm certain. I'm really certain about where is it that I want to end up, the person that I want to become, the money that I want in my bank account, see what I mean? It's not, it's not about being ego-driven, it's not about that, it's just I know exactly what I want, I'm very certain about what I want, I can see it. I saw myself uh, selling life insurance, like selling life, life insurance premiums, and I started doing that. And that happened because when I woke up, when I saw like the, the buildings and the fancy house and the fancy wife and the fancy everything that I want in my life, like the diplomas and all that, and w when you start writing things down, something happens. Because since you are going to, from this point on to the, throughout the rest of your day, dealing with uncertainty, essentially you are looking for certainty when you are seeing potential customers. So when you go about and look for like people on LinkedIn lists or, and all that, you start like, um, like, this one seems to be a fit, this one not. This one seems to be a fit, this not. So you are optimizing your day because you are essentially looking for people that do sign the fucking contract. That's the only, like, if you have, think about it, and let's be, like, realistic here. If you do have people with financial wherewithal that you can convince, and then they sign the contracts and pay them, you'd be a wealthy man or woman, right? So that's, that's the only problem. So this is why it is so critical, it is so important for you to be certain in specific areas of your life so that it all comes down to the only one thing that you have to accomplish every single day and keep at it until you win. 
This is why focus is so important. And this is why when you see all those people that going about and start this business and start these other businesses and start yet this other business and going to try this and all that, I already know that they are broke because they are not certain in regards to who they are and what they want to accomplish. If this is the, the only thing about it is like, oh, because this seems to be a good way of making money, right? You're going to fail because there are people that I have like 50 years in that they just dedicated to that one thing. They didn't, did, they didn't do other stuff, right? That's why they became successful because as soon as you start seeing things from this perspective, like getting things off your way and just focusing on like chopping that one tree, because you start th seeing things, it's like the equation, you start uh, uncomplicating things and simplifying the equation, seeing that, okay, if I solve this one, everything else will start falling into place. Because think about it. I just entered London School of Economics. It's expensive as hell, right? So if I don't have enough life insurance premium signed this year, I won't have enough money to, to pay tuition, right? And on the other hand, if I, I want a real estate investment company, like I, like I want, it's a like second branch of my, of my life insurance. I already told you about this, like life insurance premiums coming in and then use the proceedings from it to build a real estate portfolio. That's my, that's my plan because they will start becoming a pa passive income. So if I don't have enough in life insurance premiums, like I can't buy the real estate holding, see? So, and... Obviously, I don't have enough time to look at real estate. So what I do is I talk with syndicators where that the, their main problem is their lack of funds to finance their deals, right? And since they are like civil engineers and have the experience of surveyors and all that, so th they have experience in regards to that, right? They are only looking for the guy that brings in money, right? And since I'm doing financial planning, right, it's not only about life insurance, it's about critical illnesses, it's, it's about uh, income protection, it's about financial planning, so tax savings and all, sheltering and all that. So, and if it's like an investment side of it, saying let's we have an investment vehicle here as regards to real estate. So, are you interested? So, in the same presentation where I'm talking with someone, right, I'm doing financial planning, right? It's taking of life insurance. It's taking of probably referring people to my accounting uh, accounting um, partners and referring people to that have real estate. Uh, deals so that pe my clients can invest in. See what I mean? So it all comes down to me becoming essentially like the greatest in two things. It's dealing with people, right? No, having better knowledge in regards to economics and finance and all that. Because when I'm dealing with the real estate guys and I'm talking about LTVs, I'm talking about LTCs, I'm talking about all sorts of like interest rates and, and all that. So like callers and all that and floors and caps. So they see, okay, I, I like this guy. He knows, he knows the lingo, right? I, I've been told that from, from this very wealthy guy. Like, you know the lingo. Yes, that's what I deal with it every day, right? So they respect that. They say, okay, this guy is a good fit, right? He just needs the, like, the, he just needs, like, the, to get a fit. And the fit is you bring people with money to, to invest in their deals and you get the commission, right? So it's essentially product knowledge, right? Your finance, lo finance knowledge. It's dealing with people, understanding where they're coming from and like knowing how to deal with them. So the psychology factor are, it has a huge, a huge part to this. And essentially it's like you becoming essentially a human resources person, essentially. So you like filtering out the ones that don't fit from the ones that you like seem to be the best fit. Because when you nail them, right, because you have the product knowledge, right, because you know how to deal with them, and because you trust the product that you are delivering to them so that when they are like throwing you objections, you are confident in yourself, you are certain about who you are and what you want to become, they, they can hit you, right? It won't go through you because it, it, they, there will be a deflection because they will sense confidence from you. Something like, no, he won't, he won't stand down because he's confident in himself. And I can tell you that in a relationship, and what I mean relationship is that when you're having a dialogue, like two people are having a conversation, the one that has the most confidence will win because the other one will start folding. It's just something that is, it's, it's a human nature thing. The one that is lacking confidence will start deferring confidence to the one that has more confidence. And since you started your day from a point of, I know who I am, I know where I wanna be, I trust my product, I have, I'm developing my knowledge in regards to the industry that I am and regarding the product that I'm, the product that I'm del delivering to people, right? They'll start s seeing that, they'll start perceiving that. 
and you start becoming a figure of authority. And the more focused you become when you start understanding that your jo only job essentially is optimizing your day in regards to who you're going to call today, right? What is it that you're going to tell them and how are you going to deal with objections? So when you start like becoming li like this, you start seeing that. And now we are coming back to the first point that I addressed in the beginning of this, this video, which is having less, uh, less um, uh, pause time in between calls. And you start noticing that you start placing less pressure on calls because you are confident in what you are conveying to people. You're not having this perception of this unbelievably Thanos-like uh, entity that is completely unsurpassable, eventually lost essentially, right? So you are essentially like, you need to stand out of your own way. Essentially, it comes down to that because you start seeing that the other person that is in front of you, doesn't matter if they are very wealthy or very poor, they have certainties and doubts as well. So when you start showing them confidence in regards to what you are telling them, they will start feeling that. So it's all, the, all regards to the amount of money that they have available in order to pay for that product. And obviously, if you're having a one hour conversation with someone that has 100 bucks, and one hour conversation with someone that has 100,000 bucks for life insurance premiums, see what I mean? So at the end of the day, like both of them paid, like, and one got you very wealthy and the other one didn't. It's, it's com it comes down to this. So obviously 100,000 bucks, it's not a lot of money, but it's like already like a chunk of money. So if you have like 10 of those, it's, it's solved, right? So what I want for you to, the, take, the, main, the main key takeaway from this conversation is that if you are feeling pressure in between calls, it's because you are uncertain about a certain number of factors. And it's mainly because due to lack of experience, because you are in the beginning of doing this, or you are missing something that is really important in this kind of chain of things that need to be like at 10 level from zero to 10, need to be at 10 level from you regarding the product confidence and regards to the person that you're talking to and not perceiving them as like this incredible figure of authority that's like completely superior to you. It's actually the other way around. They are benefiting from you spending a bit of your time talking to them. And when you start addressing them in that perspective, they will start seeing you differently because you are telling them, what is it that you tr don't trust about me? It's the company. The company is 200 years old. They, they are part of the S&P 100 and make 50, 50 billion in life insurance premiums every year. See what I mean? So it's like, what is it? Is a product? If you, if you pay me 1000 bucks and I give you 1 million bucks and something happens, do you think it's your employees or your creditors they are going to save you? No, it's me, right? So they'll, they'll feel you differently. And this is what you want to address to people. So forget about the overcomplication bias. Just focus on being confident in what you're delivering. You're delivering a great product. Be confident when you're talking to people that they are the ones that should be happy for you to call them because you are going to solve a problem for them. Even if in the beginning, they're not realizing that they who do have a problem. It's your job as a salesperson to show them that they are going to benefit from the product that you are delivering them. And so the key, the key takeaway from this is that you need to become essentially a human resources person. So choosing the best people available from your assessment when you are looking through all those profiles on LinkedIn and see these are the best fits to go. Choose 50 of them so that you can call 50 or 60 people a day, right? And then focus on delivering the product. When you are having a conversation, you are essentially your main thing there is to have a main conversation with that person, like an in-person conversation, or if it's Zoom, well, at least, at least you have that. But just show yourself in a way that you are confident about yourself, you're confident about the product, and you are benefiting them as they are going to understand that, okay, this guy is actually helping me. I wasn't realizing that this is so important. And when you start doing this in, the, in this specific way of presenting things, they will start feeling you differently. So take away all the complication, all that stuff. It's not real. So, so calm yourself down, understand that these people need you. And you, your only job is to be like an educator, show them the benefits of the product. And in the end, if, they, if you start feeling that that person is probably a douchebag or something that is not worth your time, just hang up, call the next one. And you'll find that the more calls you make without making any like um, pauses in between, you start calming down. It, it's, it sounds like counterintuitive, but like in the beginning, 
It's like you want, to, you want to quit after the first call, but then you say to yourself, why? Let's call a second person. They will benefit from me. Remember, it's about them. You are helping them, right? It's all about them. Who do you know? Who can you help? Who is the person that is in your company that if some, some reason something happens to them, they would benefit from the product. See what I mean? So it's like you, you're pushing them, them around. Remember, there's 7 billion people in the world that you can talk to. You just chose to speak with 60 today. So you're, it's, it's going to be like a hit or miss thing. You're going to be wealthy, but it's going to be a hit or miss thing. You are looking at people and improving your people knowledge when you are go about and choosing them, the ones that you're going to talk to every single day. And the more like optimized your process becomes because you start assessing from those people the ones that seem to have like the they have the most potential you, you start becoming better the game doesn't become easier it just become better at it so the better you become at this the more likely you are uh, about to have a conversation with someone that does have the financial wherewithal and that you are going to close and if they close like a large amount of premiums let's say 100,000 each one it close 10 you just lay nail one million bucks that's it that's it I have this um, approach from this very large corporation here in Portugal, they had millions in premiums, essentially. I'm just, I was just having a conversation. They cold called me, right? And we started having a conversation, right? The conversation wasn't that different from someone that was talking before that they only had resources for 1,000 bucks or, one, or 10,000 bucks in premiums. They had concerns. They had things that they needed to clarify. They just need, they had different resources. See what I mean? So forget about all that overcomplication. Forget about all those naysayers, about all those people telling you that it's not possible and all that. They are lazy because they, they quit on their dreams and they try to have you quit on yours. So they are dysfunctional. You should, you should quit relationships with those people and just either be alone or try to find people that have millions in their bank banking account, checking account, because those are the ones that can help you see the world in a better place. What I'm telling you is the experience that I got from dealing with very wealthy people. And you start seeing things from a this different perspective. Who would you rather be around with? Like broadcast people or like people that have resources and like looking to have meaningful work and meaningful relationships. See what I mean? So it's all about that. And I, I'm sharing this with you because I find sometimes that I tend to overcomplicate things. And when I go like to like go onto the street and like on a stroll or something, and I see people, random people, like not doing anything. I, I just tell myself, why am I overcomplicating things? Look at these people. They're not doing anything, right? I'm, the, I'm trying to actually call people. So I'm actually doing something, right? So if I would be having a conversation with that guy because I just look at a, at a, a photo and just call him and because it looked like a good conversation to have, like, why would I be complicating things, right? So it's you. You are the one like standing in your way. And as soon as you start realizing that, you'll start simplifying things because you are calling someone, even if it's a cold call, but you are calling to be helpful, to be useful. You're going to help them so that they can understand the benefits of having your product because in the end, tax creditors and people that will come to their company and say they don't care about if they had an accident, if their um, spouse died or they had some sort of critical illness or some fatality, they just want their money. So if you are the one, when you are calling them, interrupting their day, you, not, you don't need to be uh, apologetical, you don't be, need to uh, uh, be excusable anything because you are just telling them, if something happens to you, you will have 10 million here. And the reason for it is because you're signing a, a contract with MetLife Insurance Company we will be providing you a 10 million life insurance policy in case of critical illness, in case of critical disability, in case of some sort of personal accident, in case of a fatality, you will have 10 million here, right? It's not the car guy. It's not, the, it's not your employees. They don't care about you. Today they're working here. Tomorrow they're working at McDonald's. Who's the one who's going to help you, right? So why are you telling me it's expensive? It's expensive compared to what? To the amount of wages and W2 income that you are paying here? Seriously? Those people are not going to be here tomorrow. Or are they if you, have, if you have a problem? No, I'm here. And I'm here because I'm the life insurance guy, right? So you'll be calling the life insurance company or your spouse or rel relative and saying, we want to, want to activate the life insurance policy. And the insurance company will put, will transfer to this company 10 million. 
Is anyone else here is going to do that? Is that guy doing that? Is that secretary is going to do that? Right? Is the car company going to do that? Is your creditors going to help you? See what I mean? So you're being confident. And you're being confident because you know and you are certain, unequivocal and unapologetical that your product works and it makes sense to them. It's a great product fit. It's going to help that company. If you quit when you are talking to them, it's because you're lacking product confidence. You are lacking confidence in you in regards to your role is. But if you do have confidence in what you are presenting to them regarding yourself first and the product and the company, right? And why is it that is a, a good product fit, right? They'll start feeling that. So I hope you, you, take, you have this takeaway from this conversation today. Be confident in, in what you do. Be certain exactly what your role is in the econ economy and start like improving these amounts of uh, sk this skill set that is very important. And I'll tell you again, it's about product knowledge, about industry, industry sector, and it's about the psychology when you are dealing with people, especially the, um, the script when you're telling people. So your only job is essentially is com coming down to talking to the main people that you perceive to be the ones that are going to get you to wealthy land. And it's essentially, it's a hit or miss thing. So this is com coming down to this. So you are optimizing your day because you are confident. This is the main takeaway from this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Remember to subscribe and, and for some reason you have any questions or any doubts or any concerns, just let me know and I'll be more than, help, uh, more than happy to come on board and help you guys out. Peace.